Hello, this is Paul O'Doherty, and you're very welcome to Bookbound. On this week's programme, my guest is Peter Donnelly, author of Photons, which has been published by Apello Press. Peter Donnelly from Dalkey graduated with a BA International and an MA in English from UCD two years ago. In 2010, he began to publish poetry in journals and within UCD, where he won the Undergraduate Poetry Prize. His uh, first collection of poetry is Photons, and I'm delighted to say Peter Donnelly joins in the programme. Peter, you're very welcome to the programme. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for the introduction. Um, your debut um, collection is called Photons, and of course the idea of photons conjures up all sorts of illusions from those particles representing quantums of light or other electromagnetic radiations to a, a notional energy that weighs nothing while at rest. Your collection also contains uh, such poems as An Event Horizon, uh, Light, uh, Sound and, and Pavement Stars. Can I begin by asking you how you see the title of your collection and, and the importance of uh, poetic photons? Well, the title of the collection came to me as a kind of crystallization of many years' work. I mean, by that, that um, I noticed uh, themes arising in my writing come up more or less organically, and I found myself to return to to um, to light as a trope, um, as a as a physical and metaphorical space. Uh, over and over, and then it, it just um, it just made sense to encapsulate what I'd been, you know, going, you know, working on on and off for five years as as photons. So um, it does it does have it, it has uh, scientific ramifications, of course. And I did a bit of reading around that, but um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's really just. Uh, as I say, a, an organic thing that came gradually. And you've been working on this collection for the last four or five years? That's right, yeah. I mean, I um, I began writing as most or at least many writers do, I'd imagine. That is to say, very tentatively and uh, and shyly. Um, so I'd, you know, I'd do a bit of erotic erotic writing here and there and then stop and then shelve uh, pieces of work and return to it at a later date. Um, but it's only really within the last couple of years that I achieved any kind of disciplined regular work habit, which is what you need to to push the thing to the finish line. Of course, yeah. And maybe you might read for listeners um, the first poem in your collection, An Event Horizon. Sure, yes. Um, Please. I should preface this by saying briefly that an event horizon is a notional surface beyond which no radiation or matter can reach an external observer. So, an event horizon. The ghosts of massive stars are those swirling black holes, and a black hole inwardly pulls with Herculean force light from afar. Dark matter laughs at the attempt of light to perform illumination. Appreciate, please, my lyrical explanation. Not even the muses' retinas are exempt, and they saw the oddity of space-time's rules in the golden lightning of the sunken sun. I consider, in the interstellar dust, the dying jewels made from fusing helium and hydrogen. The supernova's finished and everything cools. The light is switched off before it was on. And sure, light caused Wordsworth's daffodils to bloom, just know it had to beam through this icy vacuum, this aggrandizing infinity of mostly emptiness, compressed into a nutshell when man dreams. What's up there, king of infinite space? The confines outlining psyche in this place are fluid as my warped defini- definition of time, and I have composed this rhyme with utmost precision ad hoc, knowing full well the relativity of the clock. It's a very complex uh, poem to start with. Uh, you're based in Dalkey, close to the sea, where uh, where did that idea for for, um, for the the uh, an event horizon come from, and, and how much of it is influenced by the night sky that that reaches out to see this, to sea and, uh, and and the natural light, and, and, and I suppose away from say the urban and un, and yeah. the unnatural light that that Dublin or and possibly Dalkey generates. Well, uh, I, uh, it's it's always when you're asked. When one asks what what influences what, it's always, it's always tricky terrain. But I think course, yeah. it, it, it does very strongly. 
um, the my my environs growing up would have uh, uh, offered some very attractive night skies, and you know that those uh, sear themselves into one's imagination. So I, I, I'd say quite a bit. Aside from light, there are many references to sound in, in your poems as well, from minor acoustics, uh, the yeah. second poem in your collection, yeah. um, uh, to the, the first lines of, of in your third poem, Kitchen and Garden, the boiling has finished and the kettle clicks, uh, the, the water begins to settle. Um, between sound and light and the obvious reference um, in your poetry, there's also the juxtaposition of modernity with nature, such as the modernity of the modern kitchen, to the, the foxes foraging outside. Yeah. Uh, what is the, the the genesis of such poems like Kitchen and Garden, and, and how much time and energy, or uh, photonic energy, uh, do you, so to speak, do you spend writing each poem? It's, uh, it's the actual physical practice of writing the poem really comes as a as a as a result, I suppose, of, you know, it, it sounds grandiose, but contemplating things like there, there are, uh, you know, stimuli from one's environment and ideas are getting mushed around in one's head and, you know, it, 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 it's always churning over. And then when the actual writing happens, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, chiseling all that into order, you know, so it's, um, I, I do, I do work, work hard at redrafting poems, but, um, the, the kernel of them often originates, uh, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah quite a, like it could be, you know, years ago sometimes, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, part of the mystery of consciousness and memory. So it's, um, it's difficult to say, but, uh, it comes, like it, it they come from, uh, from, experiences that happened a good bit of time ago in in more cases than not there there are more than one voice though um in your poetry Indeed, yeah. it's not as if you know okay the, the first one there as i said it was is quite complex and it brings in all of those notions of of um uh, what's external to the earth even um Maybe you might read um, uh, something a little bit more different. Uh, uh, maybe postmodern. Um, if you uh, recite postmodern for our listeners, please. I'd love to. Postmodern. The spaceships have landed near. The aliens are drinking beer with the angels, who are high as kites on the summer saturated lawn. Through the sun, pollen and optimism and bits of flowers taken by eddies of wind, turbine jocosely about the grass and air. And my wife is suffering a migraine, and so becoming sibylline with a head-splitting vision. In the small fissures of her almost grammatical English are currents of speech from the ether sphere, tapped into, and I hope they'll start gushing. It's been an unusual year, I think, for angels. Um, you, you refer to your angels, um, who are as high as kites. I think earlier on in the year, uh, Guy Garvey from the English band Elbow, um, another fine poet, in his song, uh, Honey Sun, uh, I think he mm. said that, I know a place where the angels lace the lemonade. Uh, All right. <laughs> what, what's your postmodern view of aliens and angels, um, and those other voices that people, um, postmodern? Well, um, there's, uh, a book of poetry I like from the 1980s called The Martians and the Postcard Home. Lovely. Um, so I, it's by a, by an English poet. Um, so I, I like the, the notion of following something very weighty and serious, like a translation of the divine comedy with that sort of, uh, yeah, trivial almost, um, uh, evocation of spaceships and angels, you know, so it was, it was I intended a, a genuine humour to follow on from that, you know, uh, and... Um, it does. Um, 
re- reading your poems, th- th- there, there, there are obvious re- references uh, to Dante and the Divine Comedy that you just mentioned, and also uh, Brett Eaton, Eaton Ellis, uh, Seamus Heaney, T.S. Eliot, Poem Bulldoon, Arthur Rimbo, and uh, um, I like the one particularly uh, to, to uh, Federico Fellini, um, who you refer to as those Fellini films and his beautiful kicking of the Catholic Church. Yeah. Um, how have those writers informed and influenced your writing? Well, in the case of, um, in, in the case of Fellini at least, you know, I mean, it was, it, it always seems to me that, um, in my parents' generation in the 1960s, it was more of a, an issue or more of a, an act of preoccupation to, um, secularize yourself or, or, um, joyify yourself if you like, you know, uh, to distance oneself from, uh, the dogma of the Catholic Church, which is is the the metier of of art in a lot of cases, but um, the uh, one of the reasons why I began writing was my reading of um, of T. S. Eliot. Like I I encountered uh, first the Wasteland and then the Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock when I was, I suppose. 17 or 18, you know, and as, as most people reading these these great works, I was, you know, totally bemused and felt that I'd understood about 3% of what I'd read at best. Um, but it had a it had a strange power that lingered in me and didn't leave me. And I held on to that and Elias certainly taught me very important lessons early on um, about particularly I suppose intertextuality and your I mean one's uh, relationship to one's um, literary precursors so yeah the, the, those all those writers are very important one of my favourite um, 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 of your poems um, your collection is The Pun Man's Pints at, at Finnegan's yeah. Maybe you might recite the pun man's pints at Finnegan's. I will indeed. Uh, could you could you tell me what page you're on? I, oh. I couldn't recite it. I'd have to. to f- I'd have to fly to that uh, page nineteen. Page nineteen. That's fine. I feel like I'm in school again. That's okay. It's fine. I just, look, yeah, I had the book <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> okay. The pun man's pints at Finnegan's. My brother Sean and I saw our future selves go in a parked car's window. Apparition in the reflection and the transmigration giving elation. The four of us, i fratelli Donelli, farting around there and then drinking Nastro's Oro at the, at the Circus Maximus. Enter the ghost of Caesar. The sound of Cassius's bottle clinking with Brutus's in the future Colony air. Lovely poem. Um, uh, you mentioned Kalani, and Donkey also features in your in your poetry. It's obviously where you're from, and you include the poem July in Donkey. Um, it hasn't been the greatest of Julys, I suppose, and in, 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 in reference to your reference to uh, z- uh, zombie pill pushers peddling their bikes up the Pyrenees, the Tour de France so far in July, uh, going around yeah, the head right. of the north and Alsace, hasn't been great either. No. Um, that's that said, maybe you might recite your version of of July in Donkey. Sure. Yeah. July and Ducky. Suburbia is a desert full of life, and its streets people implode with hollow humidity when the weather styles itself as fierce and postcard bright. July. A tranquilizer broadcast itself through the atmosphere like pollen, and suburbanites go narrow of eye like snipers, descend in themselves and resemble the zombie pill pushers peddling their bikes up the Pyrenees on my TV. You and I waited for her polo to pick us up from the path, but to me Hyde Park was like a river that exposed its condition in ripples when SUVs swished and purred over its surface, which was waste and empty. My shades were eagle-eye golden, and occasionally the sun's white plash would slide quickly across them, And this to my eye was permission to cross to the far side where hip-hop from her car flushed the sunlight clean of its silence. Lovely. Um, 
Incidentally, um, what's that poem's connection uh, to uh, Breath East Eaton Ellis, the, the author of Less yeah. Than Zero in American Psycho and Imperial Bedrooms? That's a good question. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, well, I liked, I admired Breath East Eaton Ellis' uh, fiction for quite a long time, and um, he has this skill of creating these... Uh, I suppose, meta-Californian worlds that are at once both beautiful and nihilistic, like empty and salubrious at the same time, gorgeous and soulless. And I, I just, reading, if American Psycho, of course, will, will always be regarded as the Ellis masterpiece, but if, you know, like The Rules of Attraction, uh, Less Than Zero, these books, uh, bear semblance to my experience of South County Dublin, I guess, living there in the, the I grew up in the, at the height of the, of the Celtic Tiger, you know, and it had, um, it just, it just, the, uh, the universes he created in his books felt very like the one in which I was living when I was an adolescent, I guess. So, I, I, I mean, I wrote this poem when I was 19. It's, it's, okay. It's, it's, the, it's the oldest by far, you know, you know, it's not, um, most of them are, you know, two, three years old at most, you know, but this kind of, uh, holds from my younger self, if you like. So, that, that, that's where it comes from. So, yeah, that's an interesting sort of insight because it's, um, a lot of what you, if you, <laughs> an initial, what you just said, making a connection between um, uh, his view of, of California and Los Angeles and all of those, um, that's pretty. It's a pretty poor indictment of South, South Dublin until you actually go into, I suppose, the uh, the ins and outs of it. And there are, yeah, um, South Dub- County Dublin does have its American cycles, or it does have its local cycles, and all the rest of it. I suppose. Um, You've just recited a, a, a moment ago J- July in, in Dorky, and in, in your collection there's also July in Brussels. Yeah. Uh, wh- what's the significance and importance of July in your poetry? Is that just a, an end of term thing, or is is there a greater significance? Well, I like to think that there is. It does. It does carry a certain weight of signification. Um, I most uh, my. Um, one of my, I don't, I don't say my best friend, you know, because I have a number of best friends, but anyway, my best friend is, um, uh, called Andrew Carroll from Brussels and he, um, I, you know, make a, an annual trip over there each summer or soon after. And then I remember just, you know, I had this, uh, just wondering, there was this blazing hot period and I just remember wandering through the streets with them and wanting to record the experience and just I wanted it to to dovetail with July and Dawkey, you know, because there were these you know there are overlaps in in uh in weather and that, you know, clammy, humid feeling, but also different environs. So I just um there's there's no there's no more profound reason than that that I liked um Okay. Uh, and and finally Peter Donnelly, um what's next for Peter Donnelly? Well, I mean, um, there are uh, more promotional things to be done, but I, I always, um, I've always got stuff in the pipeline. You know, I like to keep it ticking over, and uh, it keeps me, it gives me a kick to, to work, work at something every day. So, I, 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 I honestly couldn't say, but um, there, there will be something coming. Well, you've written a fine collection of poetry, and it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Bye bye. Uh, Photons is published by Pellow Press. It's priced at eleven ninety nine euro, and that's a book of poetry that I thoroughly recommend uh, for anyone looking uh, at uh, an up and coming poet with a big, big future.